In the previous lesson, we learned about the universal affirmative and universal negative. Now we will address the particular affirmative and particular negative. These are the other two types of categorical propositions. Particular affirmative. A proposition stating that some member or members of a given category belong to another category, also referred to as some SRP, where S is the subject and P the predicate. These are also sometimes referred to as I sentences. Particular negative. A proposition stating that some member or members of a given category do not belong to another category, also referred to as some S are not P, where S is the subject and P the predicate. These are also sometimes referred to as O sentences. Importantly, we will also consider propositions of the form this S is P or this S is not P to be special cases of particular affirmative and particular negative propositions, respectively. It is also important to note that as with universal propositions, particular affirmative and negative propositions can each be true or false. We want to avoid confusing the word affirmative with the word true and the word negative with the word false. Here are some examples. Particular affirmative general cases. First, some cats are albino. Two, some cats are dogs. Propositions one and two are both examples of the particular affirmative. However, there is an important distinction. One is true because some cats are in fact albino, 2% of them actually, but two is false given that cats and dogs are separate species. Particular negative general cases. Three, some snakes are not reptiles. Four, some snakes are not poisonous. Propositions three and four are both examples of the particular negative. But once again, there is an important distinction. Three is false, whereas four is true. To get a better sense of how particular affirmative and negative propositions compare to one another, we can once again turn to Euler circles and Venn diagrams. Remember from the previous lessons that, in the case of Euler circles, we must look to spatial relations to understand the propositions. On the left, we are supposed to recognize that a portion of the area in the circle labeled cats is included in the circle labeled albino. On the right, we are supposed to recognize that a portion of the area in the circle labeled snake is not included in the circle labeled poisonous. This spatial relation represents the particular negative proposition, some snakes are not poisonous. Unfortunately, some confusion might arise due to the fact that there is no real visual distinction between the two diagrams. This is where Venn diagrams come in handy. In the case of Venn diagrams, we use an X to signify that something belongs to the category in question. On the left, we see that the region labeled cat and albino is marked with an X. This represents the particular affirmative proposition, some cats are albino. On the right, we see that the region labeled snake but not poisonous is marked with an X. This represents the particular negative proposition, some snakes are not poisonous. Just like many of our assertions about the world are instances of universal affirmative or universal negative propositions, we also make many assertions that are instances of particular affirmative or particular negative propositions. Getting a sense of how these propositions function and relate to one another helps us to understand what exactly it is that we're saying about the world around us.